Coming up on At the Heart of It with Nancy Brown. And I've learned how to live every day like it's my last. Jensen's never quit. It really was a philosophy and a principle that I might lose the match, but I'm not giving up. And we never quit. Yes, we never quit. Jensen's never quit, and the American Heart Association never quits. Welcome to At the Heart of It. I'm Nancy Brown, CEO of the American Heart Association. The late, great tennis player Arthur Ashe once said, from what we get, we can make a living. From what we give, however, we make a life. My guest today is here to talk about the trauma of cardiac arrest. He is working tirelessly to turn his own emotional turmoil into powering real change in the world, and he's bringing the tools for survival to a tennis court near you. Giving back to others can bring a whole new level of joy and contentment. My guest today discovered that joy, but only after a lot of hardship along the way. From addiction to recovery, from the picture of health to near death, Murphy Jensen knows about life's highs and lows because he has experienced them firsthand. Murphy stared down death several times and came out on the other side to rediscover joy and happiness. And today, he'll share his story with us. Murphy Jensen and his older brother Luke electrified crowds at the 93 French Open. After winning six straight matches, the up-and-coming doubles team walked away as Grand Slam champions. But as their popularity skyrocketed, Murphy struggled with anxiety, drugs, and alcohol. After a decade of addiction, Murphy finally realized he needed help. He's been sober ever since, but his story doesn't end there. In 2003, Murphy fainted while jogging his doctor diagnosed him with myocarditis, an enlarged heart due to a viral infection. The young athlete recovered, but his heart hid lingering scars. The day before his 53rd birthday, Murphy was playing an exhibition match against Luke when he suffered a cardiac arrest. His heart stopped, his breathing stopped, and his head slammed into the court, fracturing his skull and cracking his teeth. Thanks to fast-acting medical professionals standing by and six shocks from an automated external defibrillator, Murphy survived. Now, with a defibrillator implanted under his skin to detect and correct irregular heartbeats, Murphy is helping others by raising funds to increase the availability of automated external defibrillators, including in schools and rec centers. His goal reflects his passion to ensure that wherever there's a tennis court, there's an AED. Today, we'll talk about navigating life's challenges and how to rebound when you think you're down and out. Murphy, thank you so much for joining me today. It's such an honor to have you on the show. Yeah, likewise. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Well, before we dive in, mm -hmm. I would like to have a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. I have something called my Signature Five, so I have questions for you, and I'm anxious to hear your answers. You ready? Yes. Clay or hard court? Ooh, preference. I used to say wherever we had success would be my favorite. And since Luke and I won the French Open, I got to go with the clay courts. You got to go with the clay courts. Who is your favorite competitor? My favorite competitor, unquestionably, is my brother, my dad. And uh, notable names would be Andre Agassi and dear friend. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Who is the first athlete that you idolized? Back to dad, brother, and to go outside the box, no doubt, Johnny McEnroe. I'm a, I'm a lefty. Johnny McEnroe is a lefty. He was a hothead, made me want to be a hothead, <laughs> which uh, is a whole nother story. And uh, still, I love John McEnroe um, and what he, just the way he got through the battles of life on that tennis court. Absolutely. Who is your biggest fan? I, I gotta say, God. That's wonderful. <laughs> because of everything I've gone through, I've grown through. And I say that from a spiritual point of view, but my biggest fan, you know, when I think about it, my brother, 
my wife yes and uh, my baby boys and um, and I'm a fan of me yeah and that that means something that's really important to be a fan of ourselves is amazing mm -hmm. let me ask you one more question if tennis players had a walk-on song what would yours be well Back in the day, in our playing days, we were grunge tennis, rock and roll tennis. It was uh, Alice in Chains, Rooster, and there was the line, ain't found no way to kill me yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm marred with dust, blood, and sweat. Yeah. Um, that was back in the day, it gives me chills. Today, I, I, I'm a little biased while I was in, induced into a coma. Um, my dear friend and a birthday partner, uh, Gavin Rossdale sang a song called Come Down. Oh. I don't want to come back down from this cloud. It's taken me all my life to find out what I need. Oh, that's and incredibly. So Bush. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. that's amazing. You're telling me. Oh, my gosh. So let's talk about what happened. Mm -hmm. You were on the court when you had a cardiac arrest, and over 200 people watched as paramedics saved you. What have you learned about yourself and in general since that day? And how has this trauma impacted your life? Unquestionably, the thing that saved my life was the thoughts, prayers, and one word, love, um, from the world of tennis and beyond. Speaking of Andre Agassi, he was calling my brother five, 10 times a day, and Gavin Rossdale, and people flew in from all over the country. And, and I'll be a tangent guy and say another hero is um, Billie Jean King, she was calling. Chris Everett was calling. Um, everybody was calling me and loving me and, 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 and picking me up, you know. And, we, and I've learned that to take a moment daily to thank God I'm alive and, um, and a prayer for those in, in the amount of time we're speaking and I'm answering this question, someone has, has lost their life to sudden cardiac death. That's right. And that, um, that my heart health is the most important health. Um, and my relationship with my heart affects my relationship with me and my head and those around me. We're all recovering. And then it doesn't just affect the person with the cardiac arrest or the sudden cardiac death. It affects my wife, my children, uh, my baby boy. And, and I have trauma around an ambulance. I have trauma around an unsafe environment. I will always be a work in progress. I have learned how to say thank you to um, those that have saved my life, yeah. like yourself and your organization and your mission and the work you, uh, the AHA has, does and has done saved my life. Mm -hmm. And the way I do that is by saying thank you and being available anytime, anywhere, reach, anywhere someone reaches out for help. And if I didn't know it then, I know it now that I'm in the loving care of something greater than myself. And lastly, I'd say I've learned the allowance of of uh, that love to, um, and accept the love that I've been given yeah. freely. Well, it's an incredible gift you're giving to others. You know, first by sharing your story, and secondly, by being so vulnerable about your many life experiences. And I know that your uh, experience left you with a traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. and some hearing loss and a bit of a sense of guilt. What, what coping strategies do you use? It, it has been, uh, a transformation, journaling, um, gratitude is one of the tools and coping strategies is to ask for help. Yes. I, I could use some help and my heroes, you know, you talked about tennis heroes. My heroes are all these cardiologists. But these coping strategies, um, I know unquestionably that my heart health and mental health are interconnected and my mental health uh, supports and, and could could create heart failure if I'm not right between my ears. That's amazing. And you know, I hear that there's a saying in your family that Jensen's never quit. What does it tell us about that? Where did that come from? How does that help your family, yeah. you know, connect with each other? It's, it's really taken on new meaning as life progresses and I'm not an eight-year-old junior tennis player or a 16-year-old aspiring college player or a 22-year-old potential Grand Slam champion. Jensen's never quit. It really was a philosophy and a principle that I might lose the match, but I'm not giving up. And these Jensen's do not quit. You might beat me or whatever. And, and, I, and that has, has served me 
as someone in, in multiple recoveries now. And, you know, I used to say that I, one day I want to live in a place that everyone has the opportunity to live their dreams. Now I say, I want to live in a place where everyone has uh, the opportunity to have access to services and support, uh, CPR, chest compression, AEDs, the science and the research and the mission of your organization. I, I want everybody to be aware that um, you can save a life. And you know, let's let's pick up on that because I think for our viewers, mm -hmm. most people don't realize that most cardiac arrests happen outside of the hospital. 350,000 people a year in the United States suffer sudden cardiac arrest, and fewer than 10% of those people survive. And we need to create a nation of lifesavers so that everybody knows how to do CPR. You've been a big advocate of CPR and AED placement. You know, tell us a little bit about, I know why it matters to you because you, you know, have been the beneficiary, but what is your dream for that work? And how do you hope that this nation of lifesavers can evolve to really make a difference in people's lives? Yeah, my, my dream started when I started learning about how to administer CPR and chest compression for 11 years. Yeah. And that's what's on a tennis court. I was being taught yes. these skills. And then on a tennis court, those skills were used on me. Currently, I wanna work with the AHA and the USTA to ensure that every tennis facility and every tennis court in America has an AED and, and, and the resources available to, to help everybody Absolutely. with these life-saving skills. But I've taken it a step further. I'm saying every state, because the places that have the best impact and the, 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 the best outcomes are those cities and states that have AEDs in, in police cars. Yeah. Uh, the state of Arizona, the city of Seattle, Minneapolis. So if it means me pounding down the doors of Congress and calling Uncle Joe Biden and my, yeah. my friends from DC and let's go Nancy Brown yes. and let's make it. Let's difference. make it make, happen. Let's make it happen. Yeah. And we never quit. Yes, we never quit. Jensen's never quit and the American Heart Association never quits. Speaking of not quitting, you have done something really incredible for yourself, but I think also for mankind. You've connected with world famous scientist and researcher, Dr. Joe Wu, who happens to be coming in as the president of the American Heart Association as our volunteer medical leader uh, for the next year. And you've donated some blood to learn a little bit about your beating cells. Tell us about that research and why you were committed to do this. I had been exposed to genome sequencing and mapping uh, through cancer research years ago. So I understood where he's coming from and that we're gonna separate Murphy's heart cells. We're gonna find out possibly the cause of Murphy's cardiac arrest to prevent potentially that happening to my cousins, my two yes. boys, Billy and Duke. And I am, I am available anytime, anywhere for anything that's gonna serve research and science around um, you know, Dr. Wu's work and beyond. It's amazing because you'll not only find out answers for yourself, but you're helping Dr. Wu find answers for a whole bunch of other people. And what a gift you're giving to other people. Let me ask you a, one last question. Sure. You've been on quite a journey. What have you most learned about yourself? What I've most learned about myself is uh, that I am, I'm cared for. I'm guided and protect, protected. There's a way bigger thing going on than what I think is going on. The time is now. Um, today is the day. And that it's important to cherish the moment. Yeah. Right here, right now. Yeah. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And, uh, and I've learned how to live every day like it's my last. Yeah. And... Um, and that, that this, this thing in my chest and this uh, defibrillator that I got, that is a reminder of how, how, um, how cared for and protected I really am. And thank you. We will, we, will, we will change the world together because you know there's so many more people that don't have 
the voice that you have and the platform that you've had. And I'm so sorry about what happened to you, but I'm so proud of you for taking that and saving other people's lives. You know, it is an incredible gift you're giving to all of us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's true, Murphy Jensen really is one of the most joyful people I know, and I'm so thankful that he's here to share that with us all. Thank you, Murphy, for sharing your time and your amazing perspectives. The magic of Murphy is certainly about joy and happiness, but it's also about perseverance. Murphy is happy because he realizes how precious life is. How do you find joy? How do you celebrate life? I would love to hear from you. So comment below, hit subscribe, and join me here next time for more inspiring conversations. From my heart to yours, thank you for watching.